All right, folks, we are going out right now to Las Vegas. Uh, the update on the Tupac Shakur murder update. Let's listen. This afternoon, 27 years, 27 years. For 27 years, the family of Tupac Shakur has been waiting for justice. We are here today to announce the arrest of 60-year-old Dwayne Keith Davis, a.k.a. Keefe D, for the murder of Tupac Shakur. Davis was arrested this morning by my LVMPD criminal apprehension team, and this investigation started on the night of September 7th, 1996. It is far from over. It has taken countless hours, really decades, of work by the men and women of our homicide section to get to where we are today. Several of those detectives that are standing here with us include Detective Cliff Mogg, the lead detective, detective on this case. He is now retired. Well, I know there's been many people who did not believe that the murder of Tupac Shakur was important to this police department. I'm here to tell you that was simply not the case. It was not the case back then, and it is not the case today. Our goal at LVMPD has always been to hold those accountable and responsible for Tupac's violent murder accountable. Just like we do for every homicide victim in our city, every single victim, every life that is lost is important and remains a priority to this police department. As we methodically built this case to move forward with an arrest, it was also important that at the same time, we're building towards a successful prosecution. We work closely with our esteemed district attorney, Steve Wolfson, in his office to ensure that is going to happen. Mr. Davis' own words reinvigor our, reinvigorated our case in 2018. I'm going to give you some of those details, and I'm going to introduce to you our homicide lieutenant, Jason Johansson, and he will provide you many of the details on how we got here today. Lieutenant. Thank you, Sheriff, and thank you, everybody, for being here today. My name is Jason Johansson, and I'm the homicide lieutenant with the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. And my goal here today is to walk you through our investigation and what led us to the indictment of Dwayne Davis, also known as Keefe D, for the murder of Tupac Shakur. This case has been reviewed by our homicide team and homicide detectives for over two and a half decades. And ultimately, our persistence in this investigation has paid off. Let me walk you through a timeline of events uh, that, as we know them right now. Prior to September 7th of 1996, as we all know, Tupac Shakur was an artist who was signed with Death Row Records. And that Death Row Records and its CEO, Marion Suge Knight, were closely affiliated with street gangs and that they had an ongoing feud with the South Side Compton Crips. Dwayne Davis was the leader and shot caller of the South Side Compton Crips. And both of these gangs operated out of the Southern California area of Compton. On the night of September 7th of 1996, Tupac Shakur, along with Suge Knight, and members of their entourage, which include members of Mob Piru, came to Vegas to attend the Mike Tyson fight at the MGM Grand Garden Arena. Members of the South Side Compton Crips, which included Dwayne Davis, along with his nephew, Orlando Anderson, were also in attendance at the same event. As both were leaving the fight, members of Death Row Records spotted Orlando Anderson near an elevator bay bank inside the MGM, and at that time they began to kick and punch him near that elevator bank. I will now show you hotel security footage, as many of you have already seen, related to this incident. And on this incident, you will see Tupac Shakur, who is wearing a shiny satiny shirt, along with Marion Suge Knight, who is a large man in a brown suit, punching and kicking Orlando Anderson. Following this incident, you'll see hotel security intervene, and then they will leave the area of the fight. Little did anyone know that it is this incident right here that would ultimately lead to the retaliatory shooting and death of Tupac Shakur. 
Following this incident, Tupac and Suge Knight both left the MGM to make their way to a post-fight party, which was to occur at a local nightclub. At the same time, word had spread amongst members of the Southside Compton Crips of what had occurred inside the MGM. And then that's when Dwayne Davis began to devise a plan to obtain a firearm and retaliate against Suge Knight and Mr. Shakur for what occurred inside the hotel against Mr. Anderson. After Davis obtained a gun, he entered into a white Cadillac along with Terrence Brown, DeAndre Smith, and Orlando Anderson. Based on our investigation, this is where we know they were seated. At some point in time, as they were in the white Cadillac, Mr. Davis took the gun that he had obtained and provided it to the passengers in the rear seat of the vehicle. As they were both, as they were driving west on Flamingo Road near Koval, they had located the black BMW, which was driven by Suge Knight, and then the passenger seat was Tupac Shakur. And as they turned around, they pulled up near the passenger side of that vehicle and immediately began shooting at Mr. Knight and Mr. Shakur. Following that shooting, the white Cadillac fled the area southbound on Koval. And as our, after our officers arrived on scene, Tupac was later transported to the University Medical Center where he was treated medically and died approximately six days later on September 13th. My homicide section handled this investigation from its onset and for a short amount of time. And within a short amount of time, what we knew was that we were working a gang investigation where our victims, our witnesses, and our suspects were all from Southern California and not local to Las Vegas. Within the first few months of the investigation, our detectives knew most of the information I just briefed you on. However, we never had the necessary evidence to bring this case forward and present it for criminal charges. As time went on, this case had been reviewed multiple times by different investigators assigned to my section, but it wasn't until 2018 that this case was reinvigorated as additional information came to light related to this homicide. Specifically, Dwayne Davis's own admissions to his involvement in this homicide investigation that he provided to numerous different media outlets. In our section, we knew at this time that this was likely our last time to take a run at this case to successfully solve this case and bring forth a criminal charge. It was at that time that this case was assigned to Cliff Mogg, a detective within my homicide section. And over the last five years, this, my section worked closely, hand in hand with the Clark County District Attorney's Office and followed a systematic investigative plan over the last five years. We've conducted countless interviews and corroborated numerous facts that were not only consistent with the crime scene on the night of the incident, but also corroborated and were consistent with the sequence of events that night. This ultimately led to us procuring a search warrant which was executed at Mr. Davis's residence in Henderson, Nevada. And following the execution of that search warrant, in close coordination with the district attorney's office, this case was presented to the grand jury, which ultimately led to Davis being indicted on charges of murder. Before I hand it off to the district, district attorney's office, I would be remiss if I didn't thank Detective Mogg and all the other detectives that were not only assigned this case and reviewed this case, but all the other detectives from other agencies that assisted us in this investigation. They know who they are, and thank you very much for all the assistance you provided. It does not go unnoticed. And lastly, one of the most important things, in my opinion, is that we need to make this be a reminder that the charge of murder does not have a statute of limitations. This agency has been and is invested in solving our cold case homicides so that we can bring closure to those families and justice for those victims of homicide. And with that, I will turn it over to the Clark County District Attorney, Steve Wilson.
Thank you, Lieutenant Johansson. I appreciate it. Good afternoon. I am the Las Vegas Clark County District Attorney Steve Wolfson. It has often been said, justice delayed is justice denied. It's a quote we hear often and for many, many years when talking about our legal system, but not in this case. Today, justice will be served in the murder of Tupac Shakur. I'd like to acknowledge the relentless work of the many Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department homicide detectives. We've mentioned Detective Cliff Mogg many times, and we can't mention his name enough. He is the detective, along with his colleagues, that brought this case here today to you. A Clark County grand jury has indicted Dwayne Keith Davis with one count of open murder with use of a deadly weapon with a gang enhancement. Davis will appear in court in the next few days or so for a hearing to determine his custody status and to set a jury trial date. This grand jury has been receiving evidence for months and has determined there is sufficient evidence to justify the filing of this criminal indictment. I've assigned two of my top prosecutors, Mark DiGiacomo and Banu Palal, to prosecute this case. I know a lot of people have been watching and waiting for this day. Tupac Shakur is a music legend, and for a long time, this community and worldwide have been wanting justice for Tupac. Today, we are taking that first step. Tupac was actually quoted as saying, death is not the greatest loss in life. The greatest loss is what dies inside while still alive, never surrender. Well, we didn't surrender thanks to the great work of the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department under the leadership of Sheriff Kevin McMahill, Lieutenant Johansson, retired Detective Cliff Mogg. I am proud to announce the return of this document. This is the indictment we've been waiting almost three decades for. It spells out the facts and circumstances and what justifies a Clark County grand jury in returning an indictment. Justice will be served. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Um, I'd just like to say that the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department homicide section year over year solves over 90% of the homicides that occur in our jurisdiction. You won't find that anywhere else in the United States. For those family members that have lost somebody that we haven't solved the, that case, I want you to know, just like in this case, we're not going to give up. I also say to you that as we begin, we're going to take a couple of questions. I want you to remember in your questioning that this investigation, subsequent arrest, and now indictment is only the beginning of the process. And we are committed and invested in ensuring a successful prosecution as we move forward. So with that, we'll take any questions that you might have. Sheriff, Ken? You, oh, excuse me. Sheriff, thank you. Have you been in touch with the Shakur family, anyone within here uh, today? Uh, and if so, can you characterize what they told you? The family has reached out to my office. I imagine also to Metro. We've been in communication with them. We understand that they are welcoming this news, they are pleased with this news, and they are certainly aware of the return of this indictment. Do you anticipate them being at court for arraignment of Mr. Davis? I don't think they'll be at the arraignment. I mean, that's a, a relatively short hearing, but I know that they'll be involved. I know that they'll want to be apprised of what goes on on a frequent basis. Back. Did you talk about any of the statements that he made that piqued your curiosity again or got you back into this case? Jason, you want to answer that? We're not going to talk about any particular statements, but maybe he can address that globally. He, what I'll say is there's a lot of stuff that's going to come out when it comes time for trial, but he, he provides his, his own uh, series of statements that, that are very consistent with the evidence that we have on the scene that we've obtained through our investigation. I'll, I'll leave it at that. 
Can you identify anything that came from the raid, I'm sorry, the, the service of the warrant in July that you didn't know before? Yeah, that, that's a good question. What I'll say about the search warrant that we did in July, that we obtained information or evidence during that execution of that search warrant that corroborated information obtained through our investigation. And I'll leave it at that until we go to trial. Go ahead. Hello, I'm Kaylin with Channel 3. So I, I know that um, this was obviously a big move. It, is there anyone else being looked at at this point? I know a lot of people have passed away since this incident, but is anyone else being looked at as part of this investigation still? So as I stated earlier, uh, in this case, the only living suspect related to this investigation is Dwayne Davis. All other three suspects are deceased. Vanessa. Thank you. Uh, Vanessa Murphy, Channel 8. Steve, can you talk about the murder charge if he is not the one believed to have pulled the trigger? Yes, well, under Nevada law, and this is the law in most states in this country, um, you can be charged with a crime whether you're directly involved or whether you're an aider and a better. We have an aiding and abetting statute, which provides that if you help somebody commit a crime, you can be equally as guilty. The best example is two guys that agree to commit a bank robbery, and one of them goes into the bank with a gun and actually commits the robbery, and the other guy is the getaway driver. Never went in the bank but he assisted the guy that went in the bank, so he's equally guilty. That is one of the theories in this case as well. Last question. Do investigators believe that Davis is, was the only person behind the plan to uh, kill Tupac, or was he one of multiple people who came up with this plan? I, I think the best way to characterize that is Dwayne Davis was the shot caller for this group of individuals that committed this crime, and he orchestrated the plan that was carried out to commit this crime. And can you say how he obtained the gun or who he obtained it from? Uh, we know that he obtained it from a close associate. Uh, that a lot of the actual details of who specifically, all that come out at trial, but he obtained it from a close associate of his. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.